Hi there and welcome to my lab. Today I'm going to be showing the synthesis of several lead compounds. Uh, bear in mind this is my first video so please take it easy on me as I'm not a pro at making videos yet. So let's dive in. Uh, we're going to start off with making lead acetate from elemental lead. So we'll take lead and introduce it into a solution of acetic acid which uh, will yield lead acetate and hydrogen gas. Now during this reaction we also add hydrogen peroxide. I'm not entirely sure of what the chemistry behind that is or how exactly the reaction proceeds but I'm going to assume it's some sort of chemical initiator that helps to get the reaction going. So once we have our lead acetate in solution we're going to convert that into basic lead carbonate. So we're going to take our lead acetate, which will still be in solution, and react it with sodium bicarbonate, which is just regular old baking soda. Uh, this will yield basic lead carbonate, which is formula here. It's also going to give us sodium acetate in solution. Some CO2 is going to come off and we're going to make a couple of moles of water. So it's kind of a long reaction but simply it's just taking lead acetate, reacting with sodium bicarbonate and we're forming this insoluble uh, basic lead carbonate or white lead and all this other stuff is going to be gas, water, it's going to liquid and then this will stay in solution so we can just filter this off and dry it and continue on. So the last reaction I'm going to show today is the conversion of basic lead carbonate into lead tetraoxide. So we're going to take this plus oxygen, uh, introduce some heat, and this is going to convert into uh, lead tetraoxide. I'll go ahead and balance this so that it will be less confusing. So we'll have our product of lead tetraoxide and it's, it's the end product that we're after. And that's about it. And let's go back to here and let me balance this. So. Okay, I think that's balanced. Okay, these are the materials that we're going to need to make lead acetate. First of all you'll need some acetic acid. I know it says glacial but I'm pretty sure it's not. I made this uh, a while back using MIST32YT's procedure for making uh, glacial acetic acid. So it should be pretty close but I know it's not. It has some water in it. Next you'll need some lead. That's four, uh, about 15 grams of lead here. And I've already poured out the acetic acid into this uh, flask. There's about 8.5 grams in there. Uh, we'll also need a stirring rod, maybe a spoon, a Bunkner funnel, some filter paper, uh, another beaker, and of course a filter flask. So let's get started. Oh, one more thing. Also need some 3% hydrogen peroxide. And graduated cylinder. So what we want to do is take our acetic acid and we want to put about 100 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide into there. This is just a rough estimate, it doesn't have to be that precise. This is 3% so 
I need a good bit. I'm gonna do my additions in two steps. So I'm gonna put 50 in first and then add 50 later. I know you're supposed to add acid, but let's just be careful. Okay, that's about good. Add the lead. I made this lead on the drill press with a drill bit. You can see the lead instantly turns to a dark color. I'm going to put this on the hot plate for gentle heating. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. Uh, since I've put this on the hot plate and uh, the solution has become pretty effervescent and it's pretty close to boiling it's got a gentle boil but most of that is coming from the reaction between the acetic acid and the lead and you can see the solution is quite dark and it's become cloudy with I'm not sure exactly what maybe it's lead oxides and maybe some impurities but I'm gonna let this react until most of the lead is gone it's been about 15 minutes since this has uh, been brought to a little boil and you can see the reaction has subsided drastically there's just a little bit of bubbling going on I'm going to let this react for maybe another 30 minutes just to make sure that all of the lead has been uh, consumed. Okay, it's been probably about 30 35 minutes since uh, the solutions began boiling. And you can see there's no more effervescence, no more bubbles being produced there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this hot plate off, let it cool a little bit, and uh, use this <clears throat> vacuum filtration that I've set up here to filter the solution okay the solutions cooled down a little bit it's still pretty hot so now I'm gonna filter it using this vacuum filtration first I want to wet the filter paper turn on my vacuum and slowly pour this in a nice swirl. Alright, we'll pull air through the funnel to dry out the gunk and so that we can weigh it and see how much lead or unreacted stuff we had. As you can see after filtering, I had this black residue left. Uh, there's some unreacted lead and other impurities maybe that didn't go into solution and uh, after weighing this funnel 
I have about five grams of unreacted material in that <coughs> filter funnel left. So everything else is in this nice clear solution, which I'm hoping is mostly lead acetate. So the next step we're going to do is uh, precipitate basic lead carbonate from this by adding baking soda or sodium bicarbonate and this will make our white lead. Okay I've poured the filtrate into the 600 milliliter beaker and uh, we're going to begin to add sodium bicarbonate to the solution very slowly and we have to be careful about the spray we don't want this toxic lead acetate to go everywhere so I have a watch glass here that I will use to cover the beaker as we uh, slowly add sodium bicarbonate if needed. So just add a little, little tiny amount. I've weighed out 12 grams of sodium bicarbonate. That should be about the theoretical amount needed to uh, neutralize the amount of acetic acid I used. Nope. Here it goes. I don't know if you can see, but a white precipitate has already begun to form in the solution. So we'll keep adding this until we see no more bubbles. Okay, after about adding 13.6 uh, grams of sodium bicarbonate, uh, major bubbling stopped. As you can see, that's, there's still some effervescing going on there. And uh, you see a, precip a white precipitate at the bottom of this beaker, which is our white lead. So next I'm going to put it on a hot plate and bring it up to a boil just to make sure that all of the bicarbonate reacted. As the solution came to a boil, I added a stir bar and started gently stirring just to uh, speed up this reaction a little bit. Okay, after heating and stirring for quite some time, I think most of the sodium bicarbonate has reacted. And uh, this is what we have. It is a solution with a precipitate of white lead at the bottom. So now we're going to vacuum filter it using this setup. And then put a magnet to the bottom just to make sure our stir bar stays in place. Give it a nice swirl. And pour in the center of the filter paper. I'm going to wash it one more time. And then I'm going to pull air through it until the filter cake is dry. Uh, I'd like it to be dry before we move on to the next step. After drawing air through the filter cake for about 20 minutes, uh, I was able to get this lead uh, carbonate pretty, pretty dry. And uh, as you can see, it's a nice white color. It's still a little bit moist, so I'm going to stick this in the lab oven and uh, trough off the rest of the moisture. Uh, if you're curious what I use for a lab oven, it's just a old toaster oven I got at a thrift store for about five bucks. So I'm gonna set that in there and uh, I got it as low as it can go, about 200 degrees. And uh, we'll leave that in there for 30 minutes or so until the solid is dry. So after uh, letting the lead carbonate dry in the oven for about 30 minutes, I was able to recover 14 grams in total. Next I'm going to be placing it in this uh, steel pot and uh, calcining it.
I'm going to start off with a small amount because I'm not sure what the temperature settings of my hot plate are. So I'm going to have to uh, get up to temp slowly. And I believe this stuff starts to decompose around 430 degrees. So we want it, I want the hot plate to be about in that range. So here I have a little bit of uh, the lead carbonate in this pan on the hot plate. And uh, I've got the setting at about five and a half. And I'm slowly bringing this up to heat because uh, I don't want to over overheat this stuff because it will turn into a, I think it's beta lead dioxide or maybe it's the monoxide, I'm not sure. But what we want is the lead tetraoxide, which is red lead. You can see it's starting to turn color. Got a little bit of an orange and yellow going on. And as I move it around a little more, you can see the color is there. So I'll keep doing this until this turns a bright orange or reddish color. This is after some time of heating. As you can see it's turning a nice orange color. And uh, I gotta keep it stirred. Make sure it has even heating throughout the powder. I'll keep on heating it until I get a uniform color. As you can see that the color has become much more uniform. I think I'm about ready to take this off. I think this batch is done. I'm going to put the rest of this after I take that off in there and uh, convert that. Here's our final product. 10.8 grams of lead tetraoxide. Uh, this can be used for making uh, crackling micro stars or dragon eggs. So to demonstrate what uh, this compound is, I'm gonna I mixed it with a little bit of magnesium, and let's see what it does.